Let's talk about the question, how could artificial intelligence, AI, contribute to the cause of OER, open educational resources? We have two experts on OER and AI with us. Thank you for taking your time. Could I ask you to introduce yourselves? My name is Davor Orlic. Uh, I'm with the Knowledge for All Foundation and with the Josef Stefan Institute and uh, at the Institute with the UNESCO Chair on Open Educational Resources um, for and Open Technologies for Open Education. So hello, my name is Mitya. Um, so I work at the National Research Institute, so the Josef Stefan Institute in Slovenia. I have three heads there, so besides being an o um, UNESCO Chair on OER, I'm also the Program Manager of uh, um, Artificial Intelligence, so I'm looking at and I'm working with several projects actually dealing with implement implementing artificial intelligence in several different type of domains. Uh, I suppose most of the uh, people who are viewing this video know about OER, but what are we talking about when we say artificial intelligence in 2017? So artificial intelligence is a set of various different methods. So artificial intelligence actually started to develop already in 1950s. So now we are quite old in terms of development. So, but certainly um, it's everything that goes from analyzing and understanding big data, understanding how actually world works, up to um, reasoning, up to cognitive abilities, so trying to mimic the behavior of humans. And how do you connect artificial intelligence and OER? How could, in any possible way, artificial intelligence help people working with OER? Um, I think, to begin with, um, OER is um, digital, right? The open educational resources are usually o openly and freely licensed. So um, in terms of them being digital items, you can easily take them and, and use them. Um, the OER hasn't been really reused in that term with artificial intelligence, so we're kind of pioneering that, that, uh, that sphere. But probably what's the most exciting thing is that we can actually connect online uh, users uh, with OER and therefore sort of like turn them into um, learners and actually uh, create uh, personalization around them and so on. That's one thing. The other thing is that we can, with the new methods, maybe you can even describe them, um, we can penetrate into the context and content of OER. So not just listing whatever OER is, but also sort of like understanding what it is and connecting the dots, let's say, um, to give you a plastic example, let's say that Germany has produced X, Y, Z number of OERs mm -hmm. mm, in German language. Um, probably we'd be able to translate that in many other languages. So that would be the role of AI, uh, AI at this point. Um, one, of one of it, probably many of many of. So there, there is there are, there are many things we AI can help certainly. So. One, as our said already, is automatic translation, so in various different languages. So right now we are mastering r roughly around 150 languages, which more or less cover all the world. And But there are other things which are more important. So on one side, it's um, not just about having access to content, but really to understand content, because if you really want to do something, you have to understand what's written inside. So understanding content doesn't really m mean only text, but also videos, also other sorts, of other modalities of, of, of data. And on the other side, what we are dealing with also is, um, is user modeling. So trying to understand what are the users, let's say learners or teachers, aspirations, goals, background knowledge, uh, what is his or her um, way of learning, so what methods he's using, what is the best didactical, pedagogical, concept that we have to apply. So when you have both things, then you can do personalization, then you can really make learning personalized, which doesn't really happen in formal education. And if you connect that to something which is a real AI, so a real Siri-like type of machine, then you have something which is a personal tutor, and that this is where we are going to. So could I imagine something like, uh, a uh, robot remixing educational resources for me individually. Yeah, exactly. So this is personalization. Personalization would actually mean that the environment, the intelligent environment will understand whatever you are and whatever you're looking for and whatever you want to do. 
and then actually translates that into your personal behavior and personal, uh, let's say, um, place and space. So because it's really not necessary to sit in the classroom and listen to the lecture because as everybody knows it, so people are having their attention span, which is that much. So what if you will be able to understand what's your attention span and in the right moment, post you the right content to you, for you to learn subconsciously? Uh, so where are we standing in 2017? Uh, we already spoke that AI is, uh, in, in computer terms of time, uh, an old thing. But uh, it's also, I think, some years uh, in the future that might bring us to new standards of AI. Where are we 2017? I mean, as, as you know, AI has springs and winters. Uh, I think this one is a very strong spring. Um, so we're just paving the way, especially in Europe, we're paving the way for um, how we can actually, actually reuse OER. Um, but for doing that in a smart way, we need to connect that with national and EU policies and um, even with uh, global policies, such as through the um, UNESCO Congress in OER. Um, but I think, I think we are collecting and creating OER, uh, but in the next few years we'll be heavily capitalizing on that, I think, with, uh, with the tools that we are actually developing with the chair. So, so to add to that, so what we have been actually depressed in in last years was that we, we've seen um, using AI in very different type of contexts like smart driving, autonomous, out, uh, uh, autodons and uh, let's say smart grids, smart cities. Everything is smart except there were very few applications using AI for education and this is now, uh, let's say that we are right now at the edge that we can bring that in, into real life. I mean, to add to that, if, if you think of it, um, what's very popular now is the um, Amazon Echo, right? Mm -hmm. You know that? So it's like a, like a device, like a small, chunky tube. Um, um, but what's interesting is that the Echo can have um, applications on top of it. And one of the default applications is Alexa. So what happens when a child comes home and there's, there's no... Um, there's no teachers around and there's no parents around, but there's Alexa, right? And then the child needs to sort of start with their homework and they magically ask Alexa, Alexa, can you help me with my homework? What is an algorithm, you know, what's uh, this equation or that equation? So suddenly this sort of like um, uninhabited machine becomes your teacher or your best friend. So that's a new paradigm which starts um, at the beginning of AI, but also basically built upon um, presumably um, technologies which are which are with coming from educational resources. So the potential is huge. And also, if you think about, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years time, hopefully, with the with the sustainable development goals such as you know um, climate change and so on, I mean. Inevitably, we'll have uh, autonomous vehicles on our streets, probably connected into a grid, uh, with minimal chances of, you know, accidents. Uh, accidents, it, in theory, right? So, what 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 happens when you have a school bus with no driver, um, you know, running on uh, electricity or solar power, which means basically silence, and 30, 40 children. So, what does happen with that space in terms of learning, right? Does it become a mobile teaching and learning room? Will students have the silence to learn in that? Will they use devices? Will the whole thing be a device, a learning device? So, you know, questions like that are, are actually not really that far away in terms of, uh, it's not sci-fi anymore, but it's really happening. Um, so, yeah, so what we, we see already is transformation of the roles. So the teachers are not teachers anymore and the schools are not schools anymore. So. It's something completely different. We really don't know what that is, so we will learn through time what that is, but it's something which is completely different. And it, that's actually is a, let's say, a positive element because it shows that something which is an AI can bring in really a benefit, not just a, a threat, which usually is right now 
in the media. So if you read recent articles about the AI taking jobs and all this stuff, which, you know, we know how far it can go. And certainly what you have to look at it is that the technology is more like a um, a body to us. It's becoming a body, a kind of a... We, we are creating a kind of a symbiotic relation to the technology, which is completely different than in the past. Uh, so the both of you are traveling a lot. And... Uh, what my not so professional viewpoint is that there are very strong cultural changes in in the acceptance of AI. Uh, how do you uh, do? You, do you see um, like like uh, opposition to AI in other countries uh, and uh, great acceptance for it in other countries and which are those countries? Well, this is the the famous ludity concept. Uh, so people are. It's a novelty, right? And in particular, this novelty is different than all the other. Uh, innovations in the past because actually are taking our roles so AI is taking the role of humans so then we are you know jealous a little bit we are like saying okay so I mean this is mine you know this is us humans so you shouldn't you shouldn't get into our area but eventually so how it goes is that um, people are not really reluctant into into grasping for the new stuff in particular the youngsters because you know we we are old already you know, we are talking about AI coming out in the next five years, which is a different environment, it's a different type of public using that. So, and I don't think that there are many differences around the world, so who is opposed or who is for. It's just about um, actually who, um, who, is, who is approaching to a new novelties and new technologies with a, with a, with a problem, with a thread, with a with some kind of um, 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 obstacle or who actually is a is um, looking at and finding out what are the best things that actually can bring in. So connected to that, I think it's uh, also in terms of um, political institutions being aligned with uh, economical institutions and creating incentives for all the stakeholders to kind of um, um, use AI, but also so for different stakeholders to create different things with them. But basically, everyone to have an incentive in it. Um, from companies to schools to whatever, basically. It's more about incentives, I think. There are no differences in terms of cultural or any other paradigms. Okay, last question would be, uh, you said that some things that we regarded as science fiction can come reality in the next years. So what's science fiction then? Do you have a scenario you can paint for a vision for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years from now? For education. Surely, surely you can. <laughs> I mean, what we see today already, so what's possible are things that actually are being there in um, Star Wars movies. So you can see that all around the place. It's just that uh, the question is, what's the adoption time? Like the OER we discussed before. So it's something which has been there already in the past. We didn't frame it as an OER, we didn't label it as an OER, we said this is something which is there free on the web, but it's not, it's not been adopted. And now, here is quite the same. So if you, had, if you are asking me about the future in 50 years from now, well, that will be a very strange thing. I mean, it's not just about AI, it's about the, all the stuff around nanotechnologies development, about biotechnology, so people you know, living 300, 400 years, or having a car that actually will crash in and then it will repair by itself. All this stuff which are actually completely disrupting whatever we are living today. So in AI, for example, what is already able today to do is, you can see that around, so autonomous driving is something which has, hasn't been a case two, three years ago. Or automatic translation has been solved recently, so in the sense of that this is really uh, notable. And then you have something which is a personal assistant, or then you have a personal doctor, and then you have you know, an intelligent environment that actually cities that you will communicate to, you will talk to your city. I mean, this is something which is completely crazy today in today's terms, but it will not be in two, day, in two years from now. So things are changing very, very quickly, right? And we humans, we really don't you know, follow that. That's our problem. Okay, you want to add something? Um, I think it would be interesting to have, I mean, uh, as, as a long-term scenario, it would be fantastic if you would have like a connecting, a connected learning environment with nature, I think that would be super awesome to sort of be um, like in 
constant like learning relationship with nature that that'd be something interesting with ai yeah. like you yeah, speaking yeah. to nature and nature speaking to so there are there are completely crazy projects now that actually are trying to use ai to do automatic translations to do in our language is automatic translation between animals yeah. or between the you know the the trees in in woods and all this stuff so things which are you know going in several different type of directions because this technology actually enables us to understand all this huge amount of information okay thank you very much for taking your time all Thank the best you. for your work and see you again in the near future future <laughs>